Hey everyone, welcome to my video. So today I am going over a new brand that I haven't tried before in the makeup world and that is Charlotte Tilbury. So a lot of people do know the name. It's a UK based makeup artist who has a line of makeup that is considered quite more in the high end luxurious range and I have to agree <laughs> considering how expensive they were. I only got two of her products because that's all I could really justify because they are just so goddamn expensive and I wasn't too sure about the quality. Look, I do watch other reviews on YouTube from other people who are into makeup and, uh, you know, I don't always trust, no offence, I don't always trust their reviews as being completely um, honest, especially when they're saying, hey, I was given this. I can 100% say, hey, I paid this off via lay-by because it was so expensive because I wanted to try it because I enjoy makeup but also so other people could see a legitimate review that actually says an honest opinion. So I have had them probably about a month and a half now and I have been trying to really get an idea of how they wear, how they look and now I think I'm at that point where I'm, I'm quite happy to do an honest review and as well as that I'm also going to apply it to my skin. So right now basically my face has just concealer, foundation, loose setting powder and I've also just done my brows with the, my brow wiz. I've also used a Too, Fa Too Faced uh, eyelid primer just to ensure that um, I've got a nice clean base for the product I'm going to pop on. But first, uh, avoiding the eyes, I did go ahead and I got it's called the Filmstar Bronze and Glow Face Sculpt and Highlight Kit. So it's got 0.56 of an ounce or 16 grams of product, which is, you know, okay. One thing that really impresses me, oh, hey, it's made in Italy. It does say that this lasts for 30 months, so I would say that's quite a long time. It does have as a primary ingredient, because you get two products within this, talc, which is a cheaper filler product, which, oh, God. I, I don't really think you can find much makeup nowadays that doesn't contain talc, so I'm not going to go on to a big, you know, spiel about, oh, it's a cheap product and it's filler and I've spent so much money on this, why does it have a cheap product in it? Blech. So, now on the back it does say, it's amazing what clever shading and highlighting tricks can do to slim, sculpt, enhance and illuminate your facial framework! Exclamation mark. Nice. Thanks, Charlotte. So, what you do is it has these two cardboard things that you take off. Then you have even more cardboard packaging. If you flip open this and it's a shiny cardboard inside. I'll just quickly read this. The secret that silver screen sirens have kept to themselves for years. Dot dot dot. So then it's more of an introduction of this is what you're at to see. Then you either pull this forward. Uh, there's more words here. So just on my right it says highlight. Apply to top of cheekbones, center of nose, bow of lips and brow bone for candlelit skin. And on the other side, sculpt. Blend into, onto the cheek hollows, temples, jawline, sides and tip of nose. You know what? Let's follow the instructions. Then you remove all this and I, I don't think I'll, I'll throw this out because it's amazing. Sorry, also behind on the very back does say discover the secrets of film style bronze and glow at charlottetilbury.com. I do like the website. You can order from it. I got mine from Beautylish, so anyway, here is the packaging. Uh, this here is in fact indented, well, or I shouldn't say indented, it actually does sit quite high above, but you can see this beautiful, it does have that old world Hollywood feel to it. Then on the back, uh, again, the instructions that I just read on the um, cardboard packaging is printed on the back, which is bloody useful in case you lose the packaging. I do want to keep this separately by itself in my makeup container, but I will, and I have started doing this, keeping nice makeup packaging. I just pop it away in a cupboard and I go in there and, you know, remove other stuff that's in storage there, like a doona or whatever, and I'll see my makeup boxes and I'll be like, oh my god, so beautiful. Can't throw that away. Just, it's nice to look at. I find enjoyment from that. Anyway. So then we open up the container, oh, there's a beautiful mirror that has product all over it, now you can see I generally have been using this. Um, there is, I don't know if you can see this in the product, but there is word, a word in here which says sculpt, which I have been digging at with my brushes, and on the other side it does say highlight. So what I'm going to do first is, hmm, I'm probably going to bronze first, that's generally how I do my makeup. So the bronzing brush, which is just on my lap. That I'm using today because it has that angled tip to it it's just my nude by nature brush doesn't have a number or anything on it but I just from their pro kit 
So I'm going to go ahead with the sculpt, just going to dip this baby in. And it says to bronze, apply bronzer to cheek hollows, temples, jawline, sides and tip of nose and blend. So let's go with the cheek hollows. I'm just going to go ahead here, start at the hairline and drag down. Also on the mirror on this compact there's a little star which you can't really, I don't know if you can really see, it's just there. But um, that is part of Charlotte Tilbury's logo. So, I mean, initially you probably, for me, I've noticed it's not as pigmented as some of my other bronzers. But having said that, one thing I really do enjoy about it is that it's, I did, look there are shades in this particular set. I got the lighter shade because I'm white and if you look at Charlotte Tilbury, she is quite pale herself. She's a redhead. I'm just going to lift this up here into my temples. And yeah, look, I find that when I do put it on, and every time I do put it on, because I'm used to using such a, a dark bronzer, I'll just get whatever colours and just adjust how much I put, how much product I put on my brush. So that I just make sure I don't have too much and that I don't stab it in so it's still blendable. I do notice with this that it is subtle but it's more of a natural glow. I don't understand why, because to me that doesn't really fit with the whole Hollywood old world theme, you know, with the um, silver screen stars. I find that the silver screen stars probably would have had to cake on their makeup because of the limitations of camera technology back in the day. So, you know, you can sort of see it. It's quite, you can say I've got quite a lot of product on there. And I'm, I, you know, look, I'm being rough with my application, but, yeah. So you can see it's going there now, but you've really got to pack it on the brush. But you know what? Benefit here is that I'm going to probably hit pan, and I hardly deal with that with any of my products. And I do feel a sense of achievement when I actually am using up my makeup, rather than just collecting it and let, letting it collect dust. So now I'm just going up into my forehead, giving myself a bit of shape. Um, temples, jawline, I don't really need to with my jawline, I have quite a defined one, but just for the purpose of this video, I will do my jawline. I do wonder, do other people not give a flying duck about the mirror on their compacts with their makeup? Because this dirtiness right now is suddenly very disturbing. Only because I never use these, I would usually just stand in front of a big mirror and do my makeup that way. Unless I was travelling, like if I was in a hotel or something, I might end up just using the office desk that you usually get in most hotel rooms and just applying it there rather than in the bathroom. Okay, so look, it does say, brow, it does say do the nose. Just for the sake of the video, I will. I don't need to with my nose. I have quite a strong bridge anyway. Okay. Now, going on to the highlight. Highlight instructions. Apply highlighter to top of cheekbones, center of nose, bow of lips, and brow bone to give you a candlelit skin. Okay. If you say so. Just on the top. Again, my same opinion here. Look, you, you can sort of see it. It's really, it's really quite subtle. I'm just going to blend it down into the bronze. My cheekbones aren't, I'm not someone you would say, oh, look at her, amazingly nice cheekbones. I don't really have them. I'm a little bit sunk in here. So contouring for me um, is something I will do on a daily because it does just give me that hint of um, having a bit more shape there. I don't mind. I had a, um, a doctor who does injectables say, you know, we could inject some filler there, and I'm like, well, you, you see it, I don't know, but I've seen it done badly, I don't want that. I'm, I'm just, the whole possibility of I can look the way I look now, which I'm used to looking, or they could potentially stuff it up and I could look like a Frankenstein, means that I haven't had it done, <laughs> obviously. The risk factor is just, to me, not something, it's not something I worry about. Okay, can you see, tip of my nose, chin, put too much there. But it's a beautiful highlight. It's really nice. It's more of a daily glow. I would not use this for a night out. I just find that it's not as not as um, as strong as I would like it to be. And at nighttime, obviously, you're in sort of usually darker lighting. You want something that's going to be a little a little of a stronger wearing, um, more obvious look. 
So day to day I think that's amazing. Do I think it's worth, um, how much was it? Probably like $80 Australian. I would say no. It's a beautiful luxurious item to have and my boyfriend did in fact go, oh that looks nice that product there and usually he wouldn't even notice like makeup in general and I was like okay so the packaging does look really nice and it has that feeling of wow this is quite special so if you want to get something special and you're someone who doesn't want to really go over the top makeup wise that is probably something you'd like in terms of uh, longevity uh, it, it will wear during the day pretty well it won't rub off too much so that is a positive I don't feel like it's a really, really, really high-end product. But having said that, I haven't, I've never really had that impression from any many products at all, except probably the Becca Champagne Pop. Uh, that is an impressive product, and it does last the entire day, and it is worth the sixty dollars that it costs. Okay, next product from Charlotte Tilbury. Again, I've kept the packaging on. This is the a Luxury Palette Color Coded Eyeshadows, and it's five point two grams or 0.18 ounce. So again, same kind of nice, beautiful packaging. The, the sort of a dark brown, almost black, but not quite. It's almost, and it's a hint of auburn in there, which I wonder if it goes back to Charlotte's red hair. It's a beautiful color, and then the gold. So this does look very high end. On the back, it has little four, four little squares, and on those four squares, it has the instructions of what they're meant to do. So one is prime, two is enhance, four is pop, and three is smoke. And she's written on the back. I have decoded the secret to mesmerizing eyes. Each palette contains four harmonious shades and an easy to use application ritual. Look, I'm an eyeshadow fiend. I collect them. I probably have the same color in multiple palettes. It is what it is. And there is quite a range of these quad palettes. And I really struggled with choosing one. Even now I'm like, okay, look, quad palettes are not my thing. I would usually have a gigantic palette of of maybe like a Naked palette or a Lorac Pro, that's what I like. Um, the bigger palettes, um, you know, like the Morphe ones, not so much to my taste, yes I have a few, it's just too many. I don't want to be overwhelmed, I don't want to be underwhelmed, underwhelmed with a small amount of eyeshadow or overwhelmed with too many choices. Anyway, so the colour that I chose was called the Uptown Girl and these are the colours, so this is the packaging. There is, I can't remember how many different variations there were, but there were quite a, a substantial amount. There's a beautiful mirror in there, and these are the colours. So, I don't know whether I, they're all very sparkly. They're all sparkly, there's no matte. Um, the gold is beautiful, does say Charlotte Tilbury there. I don't know why I got one with black, oh my god. But I think all of them had one really dark colour, and I already have dark colours, and where is my sticky tape? I forgot to bring sticky tape with me. That's okay. I was going to go for a very sharp, sharp eye look, but without the sticky tape, I'm just going to can, I'm just going to work with my hand. And look, I am not a makeup artist. I'm just a makeup lover. So bear with me if I make any fudgy mistakes. So I'm going to start off as they suggested. I'm going to go one, two, three, four. So the first color here, they don't have names, but it just says number one, prime. So I'm going to just pop this all over my lid. The brush I'm using is a Sigma Eye Shading E55 brush. Oh, I always hear about these ones. I keep forgetting that I own it. I just actually quickly went and grabbed some of my brushes. I thought, oh, those will do for the <laughs> for this trial. And um, I wasn't really paying attention to the names. And look, use whatever works for you. Who cares what brand it is? I've heard a lot of good things about Jessup brushes, so you get them off eBay. They usually come from China and they're, I think they're synthetic, but they have a really good reputation. And they're on my wish list of things to get, but I have fake Artemis brushes, like the entire kit coming, and I don't want to overwhelm myself with too much at once. And, and there is possibility of running out of storage space. There's only so many plastic uh, makeup organizers I can buy off Catch of the Day, Aldi, or a sale. <laughs> yeah, they're the ones I bought. Okay, the next colour is a sort of a darky grey. So this is how that first colour looks. It's fairly neutral. Uh, this is the Enhance. So the brush that I shall use for this is my oh Obsessive Compulsive Cosmetics Brushes. I bought the set when um, OCC first came out with makeup brushes and I think at the time it was like $300 or something silly. Oh my god. It would have been about five years now. And... They aren't wearing that well, I'll be honest. Um, I do like that they're cruelty free, but yeah. So what I'm going to do here is just on the very ends, I'm just going to 
start applying the colour on top of the prime colour. See how that goes. Um, I don't know if you see it automatically, but there is quite a bit of fallout. Which is interesting. I don't find I get fallout with many products at all. So, interesting. I have not been using sticky tape um, on the edges to have sharp looks lately because I have been dragging down the eyeshadow instead of having an eyeliner underneath. I found this just dragging down the eyeshadow underneath here, not in the waterline, is a lot nicer. It's neater. You can blend it. Oh, it's raining. You can blend it out nicely so it has that beautiful look to it. Oh, can I just have a bit of a rant? I got home today. I've been away overnight. It, today is Saturday. Had a really busy week so I haven't filmed any videos which sucks but I've been trying to maintain work-life balance and it's been a struggle real struggle struggle train that I am on anyway got home this morning and I'm like wicked gonna have some toast um done heaps of chores and I'm gonna just jump on Facebook and look at the makeup social internet's not working and I'm like hmm it's been raining a lot maybe there's some sort of error on the phone line um in terms of my ISP call them and they're like check your phone, pick up your landline receiver, and I'm like, mm, okay, nothing. And my phone even said, and it's a modern phone, which I don't use, because I have a mobile phone, and it said, check telephone line, and I was like, shit, my ISP is like, call Telstra. Sure enough, I did. There's a phone error in the line, they'll fix it in five days. Five days, okay, it's fine. In the meantime, I'm gonna use up all of my phone prepaid, even though there's like $500 of credit on there, probably on just, because I can't, I, I can't be without the internet. I don't know if anyone else is the same, but I'll get used to it. I'll probably end up being a lot more productive. <laughs> All right, so now I'm on to shade three, which is a smoke. So that one there. What I'm going to do is just go back into those corners and I'm going to really just go for a smoky eye look. So, look, I wasn't really, I don't know, being as attentive as I should have been when I bought this because... Smoky is not usually what I would apply to my eyes. Yes, it looks nice, but yeah, I don't think smoke is in as much anymore anyway. In fact, you never really see people wearing smoky anymore. I think it's quite easy to get confused with whore and <laughs> you know what I mean? And and yeah, and smoky, so look now I'm gonna neaten it up, I'm gonna grab a shade of brush. Which is the Sigma Taper Blending E40. And I'm going to grab that last, it's sort of pinky, metallic -y, shimmery colour, which is called Pop. I'm going to pop that on my brow bone. Drag it down. Oh, this is very shiny. That's beautiful. I'm going to go underneath as well. Just to clean up the edges a bit, because I forgot my sticky tape, I just want to make it look a, li a little cleaner. And I wonder if I have a feathered brush. Because at the moment, I have so much fallout and I don't have a feathered brush. What do I have? Okay, I've got my fake, uh, what is it, Real Techniques Bold Metals. I'm just going to gently under my eyes start blending and trying to get rid of that fallout. A little bit shimmery under there but that's okay I'm gonna go back to one of my other brushes I'm gonna pick up this gray color and I'm gonna pop it on my under eye gently I don't know if this happens to anyone else but I just accidentally painted my eyeball with a bit of eyeshadow <laughs> it doesn't hurt so much but it's just a weird sensation my camera is about to stop filming <laughs> It has an automatic time off in 20 minutes. One moment. And I'm back. So you can see, um, it does go down a bit um, with the brush that I've used. I'm just going to blend it. I'm just going to drag it up so that it sits nicely. Look, I do like how it appears so far. 
what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my Maybelline Hyper Sharp Wing to just go ahead and make my look a little bit more complete. So I have an idea of whether I need to top up any of the colours, so bear with me for a moment. Okay, so this is the finished look. I decided not to apply any more of the eyeshadow. Um, look, in terms of my impression of the eyeshadow, hmm, yeah, it's nice, it's nice, but could I have not achieved this with Maybelline or Revlon or L'Oreal? I have to say no. I, I mean, yes. I could have achieved this with Drugstore. Um, I think this brand is beautiful. I feel like it feels like it's expensive and impressive to use. And it's lovely to own. But I'm not going to be buying any more Charlotte Tilbury. Except maybe the new mascara. I've heard good things about that. But I feel like a lot of the reviews um, that I have seen so far. I don't know whether the people were actually 100% honest. I feel like it's a... Yeah, okay. It's a nice brand. But I think it's overpriced and it's overhyped. Um, also, what's on my, what is on my lips to go with the smoky eyes that I didn't want to be over the top? I just used my Too Faced Melted Liquefied Longwear Lipstick in Melted Peony? Melted Pony. So yeah, this is my look. I would say save your money with Charlotte Tilbury. Um, or at least find somewhere, like a shop or something where you can swatch it. The problem is I don't know where I can actually go and and try them out in store. I find that it, the only places I've seen it are online. So, look, this is my look for the day, even though I'm now planning to clean the house. I'm going to do it fabulously. 
I like the look. I feel like it would look really good on a night out. But I don't think that my face is screaming, wow, look at that girl. She's wearing really expensive, luxurious makeup. And that definitely shows. I could have done this with probably my Morphe palette. And to be honest, it probably would have been a lot easier to apply. I found that applying the highlight, the bronzer, was not easy. I found I was quite questionable as to whether it was applying correctly, whether it was doing the cover maybe an even coverage. I find I found that it wasn't. Even now it's it's very subtle. Um, I prefer something a little bit stronger. You can hardly see it. It's my, it's a no makeup makeup is probably the best way to describe it. Not Hollywood glamour. And the eyeshadow, no. I could achieve this easily without something else. That's easier to apply and I don't think this will probably even last the rest of the day. So look, stay away from Charlotte Tilbury. <laughs> Um, sorry, uh, other people might enjoy it, that might be their preferred formula, that might be something that they're in love with and it could really work for them. For me, no, I am going to save my money, invest it somewhere where it's more deserving. So look, I hope you enjoyed my honest and frank review and it's probably turned into a very long video but that is kind of what happens when you have to apply makeup as well. Um, anyway, so thanks for watching, I'll see you soon for another video. Bye for now.